So let's talk about polynomials. This test is going to be mostly about graphing polynomials. Uh, and it won't just be normal polynomials. It'll be things like like that. If I asked you to tell me how this polynomial ends, like does it end going up like this or does it end going down like this? Would you know? And would you know if it was the same or different on the other end? And would you know it's y-intercept? All right, so I'd like you to try this one, uh, and I'd like you to just make a quick sketch of it. If you have learned about polynomials, uh, then you should be able to say, oh, I think it looks kind of like this. And you may not know the middle part, but you should know the y-intercept, and you should know the right end and the left end. So make a sketch of it. And then pause me and then resume the video after you've made a sketch of it. Make sure you understand these. These are three really important concepts. Okay, so I hope you were thinking about this lead term. This is called the lead term. And the fact that it's positive, there is no negative there, means that it must be going up on the right. I hope you were thinking also about how this is odd. The degree of this polynomial is degree 5. Why didn't I pick this too? Well, because you picked the biggest one. Even if it's not in the front, you'd move it to the front to put it in standard form. And the one with the biggest degree is your lead term. So that it tells me it's degree 5. And now it's odd. The fact that that number is odd tells me that both ends have to be going in opposite directions. So the left end must be down. Next, I have a y-intercept of negative 8. And I really want you to understand that y-intercept is where x is 0. So it's like if I put a 0 in where all the x's are, they would all 0 out, and I'd have y equals negative 8. So it goes through negative 8 as the y-intercept. Okay, so now can I draw something that does that? Sure. And in this case, I don't know what the x-intercepts are because it's not factored. So I can't be held responsible, since this one's not factorable, for knowing exactly where it touched here, here, and here. One other thing I could have known is uh, that this has at most four turns in it. So I could have even made up some more turns. Like, I could have said, how about if it goes like this? And now it's got one turn, two turns, three turns, four turns, and it's degree five. So that's also a plausible graph. So weirdly, there's lots of right answers for this. So if you had one that was going up on the right and down on the left, because the fact that this is odd means you end up with different ends. Um, and if you had one that went through negative eight as the y-intercept, uh, then yours was good. All right, so how about a little more complicated one? Well, the fact that this one's already factored is going to mean that I know a lot more about it. I know that this one goes through negative, nope, sorry, positive 3, because positive 3 would be a 0 here. It would make this part 0. So positive 3 is one of my... Uh, my x-intercepts, and it's bouncing there. Because of this squared here, it bounces. And at negative 4, there's a dot here at negative 4. Sorry, the spacing's a little off, but now that's going to pass through there. Oh, and it's negative in the front. That means it ends going down. So let's see. I bounce here, and then I pass through this one. I'm going up on the different end and then down on the other end and that makes sense because this is a degree 3 polynomial. If I got its lead term it would be negative and here's the things I'd use to get that. And the negative, the x, the squared, and the other x and that's going to make negative x to the third. And then a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter and then the y-intercept. Now, I didn't ever label the y-intercept, but I sure hope it turns out negative because that's what it looks like it should do. So the y-intercept is where x is 0. If you put in a little 0 here and a 0 here, then I can say negative of negative 3 squared, 
which would be 9, by the way. So then this makes it negative 9 times the 4. 9 times 4. Thirty-six. So there's my thirty-six. Oh, wait a minute. It's negative. I apologize. I forgot the negative. Ah, negative thirty-six is what you get when you multiply out. Here, I'm going to highlight them just to make it really clear. The four and the nine squared. Uh, sorry, the th negative three squared, which makes nine. And then this negative here. So negative nine times four makes negative 36 was the y-intercept so that spot right there is negative 36. now you just watched me do a whole bunch now i'm going to give you one to chew on that's like a difficult one and you should try graphing it this is the heart of the matter Take a minute, pause the video here, and make a sketch, and then come back and see if your answer comes out the same as my answer. Pause for a second while you try that. Okay, so here's how you should have thought this through. First off, I suggest you always figure out the lead term and then the y-intercept. So my lead term here includes these things. I'm going to highlight them that, that to the that, and this to the this. I put all that together and I get a negative x squared times, here I'm going to write it out, negative x squared times this part which is 4x squared which makes it negative 4x to the fourth x to the power of 4. All right. Now that tells me it's a degree 4, which means that both ends, since that's an even number up there, both ends are going in the same direction. Okay. So this negative tells me it's down on the right, and if both ends have to be in the same direction, it must be also down on the left. It goes through negative 7. And it's bouncing there because of this 2. I'm going to put a B for bounce. Then here, what x-intercept is that? 2x minus 3 equals 0, so 2x equals 3. So x equals 3 over 2. That's the same as x equals 1.5. So I'm going to put a couple of marks here, and then 1.5 would be right there. And that one is also a bounce putting a B there. And then last but not least, I got to figure out my Y intercept. So I think the best way to do that is to put a zero here and a zero here. And then you could just type all of this into a calculator and it would tell you your Y intercept. But I'm a little smarter than a calculator, so I can do some of this in my head. That's seven, that squared is 49, and that makes it negative. So it's negative 49. I'm not done yet. And then it has to be timesed by that 0. That's negative 3 squared. That makes 9. And now I just have to do negative 49 times 9 to see what that is. It's a big number, that's for sure. I wish I had a calculator right now, but 9 times 9 is 81. And test 4 is 36. 44. And that was a negative, so negative 441. Wow. Okay. Negative 441. All right, so, so we're back to our graph. We now know one more important point, and that is this negative 441 is the y-intercept. So way, way, way down here, somewhere really low down here. I can just pick a spot and say that is going to be negative 441. And now my graph needs to go bounce here 
It needs to be going down on the right, which it is. It needs to go through this. It needs to bounce here and then go down again at the end. So that includes the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and it also uh, has the end values being right. Both of them are down. The one on the right's down because of this negative here. The fact that it's an even degree means they're both down. All right, that's a lot. Let's talk about one more thing, which is multiplicities and bounces. So let's say I said this and this and this, and that must be to the one if it doesn't have anything else. What are the x-intercepts here? Well, the x-intercepts are two, because that's what makes this zero, three, because that's what makes this zero, and negative five would make that one zero. And what is the multiplicity? Sometimes we abbreviate that MPY. The multiplicity of this is two. The multiplicity in that one is three, and the multiplicity on that one is a one. And then often we will call this the behavior. A two is going to be a bounce. A one just passes through. And it depends on the teacher whether or not they want you to memorize that that is a special kind of pass through called a snake or if they will let you just call that passing through because when there is an odd number like that, that is not a bounce and it's either a snake or a pass through. I'm gonna make sure you don't think it's shake, it's snake because it kind of squiggles you know, back and forth. So a snake or pass through uh, and the last one was a pass through. So triples, snakes, doubles are bounces and a one or any other odd number, you just say it passes through. Okay, so there's about 13, 14 minutes worth of uh, your practice for your test. Uh, from here, I have another assignment for you uh, that'll be obvious on Schoology, and then be ready for the test on Friday. Have a great day.